We got this, uh, this Charlie's Angels poster. New Elizabeth Banks film. Haven't seen it yet. Um, I'll throw out a review when I get to it, don't you? Oh, my hair, it's so... So Ford v Ferrari came out. Uh, it's been a movie that I've been really excited for. A lot of people have been really excited for. Um, me in particular, being a Michigan native. I was born in Michigan. I was raised in Michigan. So this movie's a pretty big deal coming out there, I know. Uh, there was some screening there, and people back home have sort of been getting all nationalistic about Detroit because... Uh, Michigan as a state doesn't have a whole lot going for it. We've got Great Lakes, Mackinac, which is just fudge shops and horse shit. Flint, so great water source. Detroit, an upper peninsula, and I can tell you what's there, a whole load of nothing. And Ford. And that's about it. So this movie coming out was a pretty big deal for Detroiters and Michigan natives. A lot of us know the story. I knew the story uh, going in. I, I knew what happened, but um, I'm kind of coming into this as a review and just like an Oscar chances kind of video because in terms of reviewing this movie, I don't, I don't think there's all that much to talk about. I gave it a 7 out of 10 on Letterboxd, which I think might have been slightly generous, but I, I think I would stay with a 7, but it's certainly closer to a 6 than it is closer to an 8. Um... There's a lot to unravel with this film. I just think that at its core, what's stopping it from being great is how standard it is and how cookie cutter it is as a biopic. The biggest thing is there's there's so many biopics that come out and I think people like taking the cheap way out and going, well, we don't have to be terribly creative visually or uh, in terms of our script because you know, it's a true story, and people can't doubt what happened, and no one's going to open their mouth about our direction and our screenwriting, and to them I say, fuck you, you're wrong, I'm going to open my mouth to you about your direction and your fucking screenwriting. People are instantly going to think I hate this film because of that, and that's not true at all, because what's so weird about it is despite it being very cookie-cutter and basic and, like, having seen movies like this before, something about it, and it's very difficult to, to point a finger as to what, makes this movie charming and entertaining and really pretty fun to watch. Despite its cliches and its lack of inspiration almost and um, like there's there's still a lot to enjoy and watch and everything unraveling because it's a great story everything unraveling is still really entertaining to watch. Nothing is done incompetently it's just it's not hitting the high bar that we need to set for biopics and I think people will kind of scratch their heads over like what separates a good biopic and a unique biopic from one that isn't and to them I, I point you to the works of Aaron Sorkin who is always not only writes like brilliant scripts for biopics unique and original scripts for biopics but teams himself with the director if the director is not himself that gives it flair and gives it a style and uh, even something to say, like, Fincher directing The Social Network has such an interesting color palette and a tone that is just almost undescribable. Or Danny Boyle with Steve Jobs with, like, the images on the walls and the constant flair and the movement and the editing. And, and when Sorkin directs um, Molly's Game and putting all these graphics on screen, like, there's something more there because he knows how many biopics you've seen, right? And I wish... This movie, I'm not saying it needed to do something crazy, but like some distinguishable style that separates it from the slew of other biopics that we not only get every year, but that we've gotten this year. I needed something about Mangold's direction or the screenplay, which had three writers on it, to separate it from those things, and I didn't really get that. I don't think like this is a, a new phenomenon for James Mangold. He's done a couple biopics before. The one I point to is Walk the Line. Which reminds me a lot of this movie in the sense that, like, it's not terrible. It's I, I'd say it's a little more creative in its presentation than this, but it's still like relatively standard, but is still charming and interesting to watch. I think there are a lot of parallels between something like Walk the Line and a movie like this. I think James Mangold almost might have gotten too caught up in the racing sequences and then kind of 
didn't pay as much attention to the heart of the film and where all of that is at. Um, I think there are a couple of moments where he does, but I, I think as a whole he was a lot more focused on where he could give it a little bit more of that kick. And when he does, it really does. And those racing sequences are really, really fun to watch. And they're really good, and they're well done, and technically they're really, really impressive. But I think a large part of it is the script, too, which is written by a very odd slew of writers. I, I pointed it out in the first, I think, Oscar Contenders Volume 1, how weird the list of writers is. And it is really weird. <laughs> you have Jez Butterworth and John Henry Butterworth, who I assume are uh, related in some fashion. Jez Butterworth, uh, pretty hit or miss. You know, he's got something like Edge of Tomorrow on there. That looks to be the only really strong hit. <laughs> Black Mass has similar problems to this movie where it's a very standard biopic. Spectre. Ugh. And then you've got this Jason Keller guy who I guess is, yeah, I mean, he's never written a fucking good thing in his life, so, you know, I, like, we can't really be astounded by that. The, because in a sense, the, the dialogue isn't very good. The story is fine because, uh, you know, it's already given to them. I, I think they certainly rushed over some things, particularly towards the end. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. I knew the story, so I was waiting for that to come, and I thought that was very much breezed over, and, uh, well, I don't know. I think it should have been more of a climactic moment, but I, that could just be me. But um, the dialogue in particular is not very good, and the only reason that you don't notice that is because Matt Damon and Christian Bale are both so excellent in this movie. And nine times out of ten, when there is dialogue happening, it's one of the two of them. Um, the movie is by far at its best when the two of them are on screen together. Their chemistry is excellent, and both of them are fantastic. I mean, like, you've got two excellent actors in front of you. I think Christian Bale has been stealing the spotlight from Matt Damon a lot more, because he's Christian Bale, he's got the physical transformation going for him, and... He's easily one of the best actors working right now. I, I don't see how anyone could really argue that fact. He can really play anything. I mean, the, the think he would go from Dick Cheney to this. I mean, the fucking... The difference between the two characters is insane. But I don't think people should overlook Matt Damon in this movie. I think Matt Damon is really excellent. He's grounded, he's humane, but he's funny, and he's got all his mannerisms down, and he, like, he knows who he's playing. I thought Matt Damon was actually really excellent in this movie. I thought he held his own against Christian Bale, which is a really difficult thing to do. But you can always tell when you have really talented performers because... The best of the best actors are capable of making bad dialogue sound good, which is, as an actor, one of the hardest fucking things you could do. Imaginable. It's, it's so difficult. And John Bernthal does an alright job. Tracy Letts has a couple of moments where he's like, alright. The cheesy villain of this movie, who I know is a real person, but like, oh my god, overwrite it a little more. Uh, he's, nah. Noah Jupe, who's like one of the stronger kid actors is not really good uh and then the wife character is is she's actually pretty decent but like too many scenes stand out to me where like the, the one that sticks out in particular is where he like christian bear wakes up in the middle of the night and he goes and he sees his son is still awake hey you what are you still doing awake and he goes in this room and he looks at his little map and he's like you know there's a little father-son moment and you pan over and the wife is standing there and just, I love my family. And you're like, give me a fucking break, you know? <laughs> I don't mean to sound like I'm shitting all over this movie. Because, I, I like, it's, it, the, the thing is, it's a lot more discernible to place what's wrong with this movie than to place what's right with this movie. Because, like I said, there's just an aura of entertainment that comes from it. It's entertaining to watch. Um, Matt Damon and Christian Bale define their characters really well. Watching them play off of each other is so much fun, and it makes you root for them. I mean, you are. You are. You're rooting for them from start to finish. And that's ultimately kind of the point of the film, right, is you want to be rooting for these guys to win. And you are rooting for them to win, and I'm not going to say what happens if you don't know what happens. And I'm not going to go into spoiler territory with this movie, because I really don't think it's that necessary. If you've seen it, you know the thing I'm talking about at the end that's breezed over. 
But it's entertaining. Uh, the, the racing sequences are excellent, as everyone had expected them to be. Technically, they're awesome. Um, I, like, it's, it's, it is. It's, it's difficult to discern what works about this movie. But there is something there. James Mangold has enough going for him. Not that he's, you know, doing something overly sensational, but he's doing enough. He's presenting to you the, the utmost basic, and I think that from there, Christian Bale and Matt Damon really ev elevate this movie to new heights. It's difficult for just central performances to elevate a movie, but th I really think these guys do. I think this is going to be a year where I'll have to do uh, a list of movies that I, and performances that I think should be nominated, because I think there's going to be a lot of differences in what I want to be nominated and what is. I would love to see Matt Damon and lead actor not going to happen. That lead actor race I think is almost cemented. Christian Bale and supporting actor would be awesome. Also not going to happen. That's getting pretty close to being cemented. The discussion between Defoe and Pesci is still one. Having seen both now, I'd put Pesci in there, but uh, I'll talk about that in the Irishman video. In terms of Oscar potential, I think the biggest place to look for it is definitely in the technical awards, in sound editing and sound mixing, maybe film editing, um, but I don't see it in many main categories. If anything, it would be like A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood where they throw it in picture as a padding nomination, which they do, and they have to do, because more often than not, I think they average eight nominees. and. Oftentimes, you get a movie in there that's not nominated in any other major category. See Black Panther last year, which was nominated in picture and not in director and not in screenplay. And I, I can tell you with certainty, James Mangold will not be in director. Screenplay, I, I doubt. I really don't see that happening. James Mangold would be much more deserving of a nomination than the screenwriters for this movie. Uh, I really think if you had better screenwriters and you gave James Mangold better moments to work with when you wanted that heart in the film, uh, like those little heart to heart, like you could, there, there's just, there has to be a better way to do that scene that I, I described where like Christian Bale is in the room with his son. There is a way to do that that is nowhere near as cheesy and is far more captivating and pulls at your heartstrings. You don't get that out of those moments because they're so over the top cheesy. I think a better screenwriter would have really helped James Mangold to make those scenes work the way I think he wanted them to work because I do think he really cared about this movie and I really think he was trying to do something with it. I just don't think he was always given the potential to do so, but I wouldn't put it in screenplay. I think if you're trying to see everything that has the chance to be nominated for Best Picture, this could be one to see. Uh, I, I, I'm not discounting it from picture at all, but if it doesn't show up in there, I'm not going to be surprised. It's a great award season. People have been in my comments constantly saying this is a great award season, and they're right. It is. It's, it's one of the few great ones that we've had recently. There's so many good movies to see. You've got The Irishman. You've got Marriage Story. You've got Parasite. You've got all these incredible films, Jojo Rabbit, that are coming out and they're finally getting talked about. That's what we're looking for. So a movie like this that's also incredibly mainstream, I believe it won the box office, and might not scream anything new to the Academy could fall under the radar a little bit, and I think it definitely has the possibility to do so. That being said, uh, you know, I got two Detroit movies back to back. I got um, Ford v. Ferrari and The Irishman, which was cool. Irishman I'm going to be talking about really soon. I'm probably going to shoot that video either tomorrow or I'm going home really soon for Thanksgiving break and I could just go back into the old set really briefly and shoot that. We're going to see what happens, but um, I'm not positive. That video will be up soon, I promise. Um, but for now, I want to know what you guys thought of Ford v. Ferrari, so let me know in the comments below your opinions, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me. I promise I didn't hate it. It's like a 6 or a 7 for me. It's It's got the baseline down and just needed that kick up there. Um, what do you think of its chances of being nominated for Oscars? Do you agree with me on that front? Do you disagree with me on that front? Let me know. Look for the Irishman review coming in a couple of days. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.